Hey everybody, this is Brian with Inspiring How You See That. We're the channel that talks about all different kinds of music and interviews some of your favorite artists. And today I have a very special guest, been waiting for this for a while, my friend Brenna Bone. Hey everybody. Brenna, thank you so much for spending this time with yeah, us. Yeah, of course. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. Okay. And first and foremost, welcome back home. Thank so you're you. from here in Erie. Yep, it's good to be home. And yeah. you've been down in Nashville now for how long? Uh, almost four years now, which okay. is insane. I can't believe you know, four years has gone as fast as it has, but yeah, almost four years now, so. Nice. Yeah. Now, did you go down to Nashville to work on your, your country music career? Yes, so I was actually working with an artist development company for about a year and a half, and I was, you know, still living in Erie, and I was making the trip back and forth to Nashville like once a month, oh. and yeah, and <laughs> driving, you know, it just got to be too much traveling, and then I quickly learned that if you really want to, you know, pursue music in Nashville, like you have to be there full time yeah. to make the connections and just, you know, really 100% dive into it. So finally made the jump and it's been great. It's been a lot of fun, a lot of good times. So, nice. Yeah. Now, what was the biggest, well, I'd say hurdle as far as like coming from a, a town like Erie to Nashville? Um, the biggest hurdle, I would say, I don't, I don't know. I just learned so much. You know, it was just a whole different world for me. You know, I had my, my friends here, and, you know, Sean Clark and I, him and I had like an acoustic act that we played a lot together, and that was kind of like my comfort zone. And then I like moved to Nashville, and I was all by myself, <laughs> and it's just a whole different, you know, scene down there. You know, everybody's down there wanting to do the same thing, so you got to you got to be right there with them and, you know, work hard and try to be, you know, the best of the best. And so I would just say all together, it's just, you know, a hurdle to learn how to live like the Nashville way. If that's sure. What you want to say. Yeah. Nice. Now, like I said, it's got to be a completely, like you said, different world. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. I mean, are you regularly seeing your heroes just the stars down there that yeah. just walking around town. Yeah, so um, especially this place called Doghouse that I play at a lot. Um, Chris Young is just always hanging out in there, usually in his Dallas Cowboys jersey. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you'll randomly see somebody like walking down the street or like, you know, if you go to any of the bars on Broadway, um, I know Jason Aldean goes down to his bar once in a while. FGL, they're down there all the time and they just like to hang out. I mean, like, it's live music. They'll jump up on the stage once in a while. It's Nashville, you know, anything <laughs> could happen. So, nice. Yeah. So you actually started on YouTube before mm -hmm. you went down to Nashville, because I know you did some songs here with Ryan uh -huh. at the Rock School Studio. Yeah. So, and What Ifs comes to mind. You know, that's oh, the yeah. big one. <laughs> well, that's funny. I We actually recorded that video right before I moved to Nashville, and I think I was in Nashville for like two days and I woke up to a bunch of messages from, you know, Ryan and some other friends in, in Erie. They're like, what happened? Like, all of a sudden, you know, <laughs> this video just, like, kind of blew up for us. And I, I think it was Taste of Country got their hands on it and did an article on us and said we, you know, sounded just like Lauren Elena and Kane Brown. Thank you. But, um, <laughs> Which you did. <laughs> yeah, so that was, that was pretty cool. Ryan's great. I mean, look, this... The rock school is just amazing. Yeah. I just love everything about it. So Absolutely. Yeah. And you've been one of many now from Erie that are kind of making your name. What do you think it is about this area? we got so many talented people for an area that's not that big. Well, I will say the Erie music scene in itself is, you know, I talk about it all the time. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm like, what do you mean? You guys don't have like a, a music scene like that at home? You know, talking to my friends and stuff. You know, we used to have the Rock Erie Music Awards, which was huge. Yep. Um, there's just so much support in Erie as far as the music scene. And, you know, so many talented people here that I feel like, you know, f for the people that moved away, the people back home in our hometown are our biggest supporters, like, still. You sure. know what I mean? So, like, yeah, we've moved away, but a lot of the reason why we're able to do what we do is because we have so much support from home. Yeah. You know, so that's, I mean, that's amazing. I, I'm playing the fair and there's a ton of my old, you know, I, I don't, I don't mean to call them my old music friends, <laughs> but like, you know, people, haven't seen, you know, my, people have, I haven't seen in a long time is what I mean. Sure. Um, so yeah, I, we wouldn't, we literally wouldn't be able to do it without our hometown support. Sure. Now, one of your songs that, that I love is 
you know, what do I do now? Mm -hmm. And can you kind of tell us the backstory of how that song came yeah. about? So I actually um, wrote that song with two of my friends in Nashville, Lydia Dahl and Ian McConnell. And it was actually our first um, co-write session together. So in Nashville, a lot of times you set up like a time to write with there's usually three or four people in the room. Okay. Um, so this was our first co-write session, and I walked in the room that day, and they are like, what are you feeling today? Who are we writing for? And I was like, guys, something has been really weighing on my heart lately. So, yeah, I went into the room that day and started telling them about my friend Tyler Cavado that passed away a few years ago, and um, it just, you know, really wanted to write a song, like, in memory of him mm -hmm. and you know, in honor of him and a song just like for his family too. Um, so I started ta talking to them about, you know, all of that and we couldn't really land on like a hook that we wanted. And I just kept sitting there saying, all I remember me and my three other girlfriends, you know, the night that we learned of his passing, all we could sit there and say was like, what are we supposed to do now? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you just go on and like, live your life when somebody's not there anymore. Yeah. And my friend Lydia, she said, that's it. What do I do now? Like, that is such a perfect explanation of how you feel when somebody passes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you're just supposed to go back to your your same old life. As if they weren't as there. As if they weren't there. Yeah. And it's like, what are you, you know, how am I supposed to do this? So we wrote that song, and um, I remember I sent it to Tyler's mom and his sister, and, you know, they were so touched by it and sure. they're great i still keep in contact with them quite a bit so um yeah that song is very personal to me and i've had a lot of people reach out and say you know that they can relate to it which is a lot of the reasons why i love being a songwriter you know sure. writing songs like that that people can relate to and hopefully it helps some people you know not get through it because nothing helps when you lose somebody but right you know, just kind of feel through those emotions. Sure. So. Let them know they're not alone. In that. Right, right. Yeah. So. Nice. Yeah. Now, on another note, not too long ago, you did a song with Clayton. Clayton Shay. <laughs> He's so how did that come about? Because little backstory. Okay, okay so, yeah. How do you know Clayton? So actually, I started watching Clayton through YouTube. I'm like, this okay. guy's pretty He's good. Great, yeah. And what I did one day is I sent him a message on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I was like, hey, there's a girl from my hometown down in Nashville, mm -hmm. Brenna Bone. You need to sing with her. He's like, I know Brenna. So a few months later, that came out. So I'm going to take credit for myself for that <laughs> song. <laughs> I, he's great. I, he's one of my really good friends, one of my go-to co-writers. Um, yeah, we met in Nashville, and we started writing together. And he actually was a writer on my last single called Want It Like That. Okay. So, um, yeah, him and I have teamed up on, on that. And then... Uh, we did the Chasing After You cover video, yep. which was awesome. He's just great. He's so talented, and I can't, I can't wait to watch his career just continue to, <laughs> like, take me with you. You guys sounded but, amazing together. Yeah, he's, he's great. Well, thanks. Yeah, nice. and we actually just played a show together. Well, not together. He played after me, but um, at this new place in Nashville called, it's on 5th and Broadway, which Broadway's like the really busy street sure. of bars and stuff down there, and we played on this new rooftop stage Um so yeah, I played and then he played right after me. So that was a lot of a lot of fun. We actually did the Chasing After You cover. Nice. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. Very cool. Great. Now you kind of have a a unique perspective on everything that we've all gone through in the past year and a half. Yeah. Because as an artist, and you're also in the medical field. Right. So how did those kind of come together at all? I mean, did that shape you as a songwriter at all? What you went through? Uh yeah i would definitely say so i mean it has been a rough year and i'm i'm a respiratory therapist so i've been i think i've talked to you a little bit about this mm -hmm. but i've been working through covid you know for the last what 18 months i've been working in the covid unit um that's how i pay my bills until <laughs> music can do that fully but um yeah so i've been i've been doing that it's been a rough year and you know it's one of those things where i'm thankful that i had that job because I mean, what a scary time it was for everyone. Sure. I mean, Nashville shut down. I mean, everything did, but, like, some of my friends had to move home, like, for some of that time and live with their parents because their livelihood is playing yeah. music. What are they supposed to do, yeah. you know? So eventually, you know, people started doing live streams with Instagram and Facebook and stuff and, you know, posting their Venmos. That was, like, 
the way that they survived through COVID. Sure. Um, but yeah, as far as songwriting, COVID has definitely changed me, you know, in an emotional sense. You know, if you ask anybody close to me, I like, not to say poor me or anything, but like, I literally cry every day. Like, just because it's been such an emotional, you know, time and I've grown so close to my patients and my coworkers and, um, I actually wrote a song about kind of my experience and my like view on on COVID, like the side that I'm, you know, the the perspective that I've seen it from. Okay. And uh, I actually went into this right uh, with Chris Sly and Mary Cutter, and Chris actually had COVID pretty badly, and so you know. I, I took in this idea. I'm like, nobody's wanted to write this song with me. I really want to get it out because, you know, it's such an emotional part of me. Sure. And, you know, I just wanted to write a song for my patients, for, you know, everybody that supported me through this time. Without my family and my friends, I literally would have crumbled. So that's kind of, you know, what the song's about. It's called Got You Home. And um, I wrote it from the perspective of, you know, all through – this whole time with COVID, everyone's calling us the heroes and stuff, which I'm greatly, like, appreciate, like, you know, that's so nice, but at the same time, like, I could not have done it without calling my mom every day, and, you know, I talk in the song about going to the grocery store and having that person, like, thank me for, you know, what I'm doing, you know, at the end of a horrible day. Yeah. Um, so actually, yeah, that song's called Got You Home, and I, I, th- I want to do something with it someday. Nice. I don't know if I'll fully, you know, produce it and maybe do more of like a piano ballad. Something okay. a little different for me. Okay. Um, But yeah, I would love to share, you know, that's a real part of me. And sure. And something that I used to try to hide that I was, you know, in the medical field as well because I don't want people to think that I don't work as hard at music. Right. But right now, it's just how I pay my bills. And that's what I tell people. It's just how it is right now. So, yeah. Nice. Well, that'll be awesome, I, I think, because, like, you, you kind of mentioned that everyone had to come together. Yeah. I mean, regardless of political differences, whatever. It was like, yeah. we all got to get through this together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So, thanks. So, you've been, been growing, blowing up, which is incredible to see. What's next for you? Well, I have been working on two two more singles um plan is to release them in the fall one i actually just got the mix back today so i'm super excited about it so now we're talking about you know release date and and all that um but i'm really excited about this next one it's called never gonna break this habit um and i'll actually be playing it at the fair tomorrow night so nice or not tomorrow night friday night I'll actually be playing that at the fair on Friday night, yes. I'm getting my days all mixed up. They're running to, <laughs> together. I've been traveling. You had a long trip coming I up. I did, that. yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, super excited about the next single. Uh, I wrote that with one of my very young friends in Nashville, Nashville named Matt Mulehair. Um, so, yeah, really excited about that song. And then got one more. And then probably going to do a little break for, like, Christmas time and all that. Sure. And then hit the ground running again at the turn of the year so nice yeah. so we'll always as it's coming out we'll make sure to share it let you guys know what's Great. coming yeah, out thanks. and that'll be fantastic awesome. so and you gotta go see her live actually friday's gonna be the first time i can see you perform really? live so oh i'm pumped gosh. yeah i'm excited too it should be a great night so you perform regularly around nashville right yep yeah. mm-hmm. okay i play a lot of writers rounds down there so what they do is they'll book like you know four people um and we'll kind of sit on stools like this, and it's more of, like, an intimate thing. Nice. So, you know, everybody will kind of take their turn and then loop back around. Um, so I play a lot of writer's rounds down there, but definitely starting to book more full band shows, which is a lot of fun because my songs, I definitely have, like, a more rock edge, and that really just, like, brings my songs to life, you know, so. Nice. Yeah. Now, any fun. plans for another collaboration with Audra? I don't know. <laughs> maybe I'll have to. I'll have to hit her up. Yeah, they're they're great. Me and Ryan were talking about maybe doing one together. So nice. We'll see. It's been a while, so very yeah, cool. Awesome. And Brenna, thank you so much yeah, for spending you. this time. Yeah, thanks. Where for can me. fans follow you online? Um, you can follow me pretty much anywhere on Instagram, uh, Facebook, TikTok at Brenna Bone, um, and then also www.brennabone.com. Um, I have new merch. Um, I'm actually bringing 
a very small batch of brand new designs that aren't even on the website yet and bring those to the fair. Nice. Um, so I'm going to kind of trial those there and see how those go. But um, yeah, so check out my socials and I'll be posting soon about the new single coming out fairly short, fairly shortly. <laughs> so yeah. Super excited. Go get one of the cool uh, Bone Zone t-shirts. The Bone I got zone. one of those. Those are cool. <laughs> that actually started off as a joke with my band. You like, know, it's partly, how do you not have well, that? Well, you know what? I, I have been made fun of my whole life for my last name. And, you know, to the point where my development company tried to change it. And I'm like, no, you got to capitalize gonna, on that. I'm going to keep it. And, you know, now I just run with it and I make the best out of it. So... Bone zone in full force now. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Is there anything else like you'd like to say to fans before no, we go? No, just thank you for you know having me, and thanks everybody for following me. And please keep adding my music to your playlist and sharing it. It helps so much. So yeah, thank you. Well, thank you again. We really yeah, appreciate thanks. it. Yeah. And thank you guys as always for spending this time with us. We love you all. God bless and rock on. You did everything you said and it didn't quite work out That halo on your head is a little sideways now Dad's giving up on dreams